I hate to sound like a mother, but I'm going to ask you to use the restroom facilities if you have to, because once we go down, there's nothing down there. And we're down, there's nothing down there. And, uh, and we're down about, very close to about 72 to 75 minutes, okay? So um, we'll, we'll give you time to use the restroom facilities, take a drink of water and this and that. But once you get down there, you, if you have any water bottles and stuff like that, they ask you to leave them. We'll buy the tickets and then they will call your attention to line up out on the patio. And then we'll go down probably usually one group. Sometimes they divide us up in, into two groups. We'll see once we get there. Depends upon the crowd. We'll be going down about 180 feet, okay? But we have to do, we do have to come up. It's very strenuous. I do hope you have, you know, comfort, at least rubber, rubber sole shoes so you don't slip and slide. Once you get past a barrier, it's a, the humidity takes over and it gets a little slippery in places, right? These caverns were formed millions of years ago. They were discovered by a group of young students who actually were walking around the area and found a cool draft of air coming up from the ground. So they became curious, ran, got a rope, dropped down that hole. And there is an area there, they call it the uh, discovery hole. It's just a narrow hole. You can see how they drop down into the area. Privately owned ranch, so they developed it to what you see today. That's, you know, free enterprise right there. But there are rules. Uh, they ask that you do not touch for the reason that touching will cause them to cease to um, be created. And we have columns. We have stalactites and stalagmites. You know what a stalactite is? holding on tight, stalactite might, might make it up to the top. And when they join, it's a column. So you have a lot of terms, you have cave uh, terminology. So I hope you learned some new words. How many of you know what a speleothem, what that is? Speleothem. <laughs> Anything found in a cave. It got its name Natural Bridge because uh, there's an area of limestone that underneath that area kind of collapsed and left a little natural bridge in the area. And that's how it got its name. And at the mouth of the bridge, before we go down into the caverns, uh, they have found evidence of uh, bear and Indian living, but not together, okay? But thousands and thousands, one ate the other. <laughs> but um, so it bats. At one time, uh, bats were found because you will see some uh, of the dark black spots that bats or mammals where they roof, would have roosted, and so therefore you get that um, damage to the limestone. The students were young, probably uh, freshmen in college because they used a lot of names that uh, they were studying English literature. And so you'll find uh, names with Sherwood Forest, you'll find Beowulf and things like that. So uh, every room and every camera area is um, named. And, um, and then the last section where we go will be the largest cavern actually in uh, Texas, largest room. Not the largest in the US, but the largest here. So that's the one that's very strenuous and then we'll climb up to go back up to the visitor center. Now, I'm, we're going to give you a little shopping time to buy a souvenir, a postcard, but I would wait until afterwards. The reason for that is you don't want to carry everything with you through the caverns. It's hard enough to drag your bodies up at that point rather than, you know, take packages. Now, if you look around, let's see. Every now and then I see a road cut. I want to point out something. See right here, you see the white underneath the soil? That's the limestone. When it rains here in Texas, the water drips through the limestone. It collects in an underground, in this area, aquifer, collects water. And San Antonio gets its water supply from the Edwards Aquifer. Well, I think, okay, 
fine. So, you know, when you open up your faucet at Lackland, 